Facebook page. We live stream every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. We have a great time talking about the Word of God. I promise you don't want to miss it. Meet us. Guess what, Minister Brunton? What? I have a surprise. Oh, yeah? Yes. Tell me what it is. It is. We are excited about our pastor's sixth anniversary. We will be right here Saturday, March the 12th at 6 p.m. and Sunday, March the 13th at 10.30. And I guess we'll be co-pastor Sharon Norwood and Elder Trifinia Jackson. We're asking all of our members to sow a seed of $75. I hope you're excited as we are. Yes. All right, let's get ready. Hey, everybody. We're here to tell you about our next upcoming outreach that's coming up real soon, and we want you to know about it. I'm here with Sister McNeil, and she's going to tell you when and where it's going to take place. Yes, we are looking for volunteers for Friday, March the 18th at 7 to help prepare the meals. And March the 19th, we will meet at church at 8.30 and head to Bread of Life to be a blessing to our community. Please come out and support. Remember that even though we are in some tough times, we remain committed to serving our community and being a blessing. We need your help. It is time for our first quarterly leadership meeting. All elders, ministers, deacons, and deaconess. We are expecting to have you join us on Wednesday night, the 23rd at 7.30. We'll be looking for you. This is that time again for another Women's Fellowship on March the 26th at Lagosa Beach. Grab all of your girlfriends and meet us there. You don't want to miss this event. Hello, family. Our Senior Citizens Committee will be having our window rally April the 3rd. Your donation will be $5 per every window in your home. All donations will be due first Sunday in April. Thank you for your support of our Senior Citizens Committee. Good morning, everybody. Listen, I have just a few reminders for you today. First, this one is for all the Cubs. Can all the Cubs make some noise real quick, real quick? Come on, do it for me. That's right. Listen, we are getting together on March the 18th, okay? It's Cub Hangout Night. I have some more specifics for you later on, but I want you to mark it on your calendar, put it in your phone, and get ready to hang out with us, okay? Now, on fourth Sunday, it is Dress Down Sunday. So you can come in your, in your T-shirt, you know, your your nice gear, your sneakers, however you want to dress on 4th Sunday. It's dress down, be comfortable, but be ready to dress. Everybody, 
praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. God, we give you the honor. Hallelujah. God, we give you the praise because you're worthy of it. God, we give you the praise because you're worthy of it. God, we give you the praise. Now, love, faith, and power, I need you to make your guests feel welcome. Get on your feet and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. on, we praise freely in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we give God what is due unto him. Glory be to God. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a little bit better. Worthy, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our call to worship, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And, and let, let us, us exalt, exalt his, his name, name together. together. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, I want you to help us bless the Lord this morning. We're going to give him some glory. We're going to declare in the face of the enemy that we are on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. We are on the Lord's side. Glory. Can somebody shout back at me? I'm on the Lord's side. Yes, I am. Come on. I want you to get comfortable. Clap your hands. I got my feet planted on the Lord's side, and I won't be moved. I won't be pushed off. Hallelujah. I won't be defeated. Glory be to God.
make it hallelujah without his strength we would always be weak but it's in his strength his strength is made perfect in our weakness huh and then the bible goes on to say that the joy of the lord is my strength ah hallelujah hallelujah will you worship with us a few moments Glory be to God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reach it. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. I want you to sing it this time. Say it. You are my strength. Yes, Lord. Lift that up in this place. Sing it again. You are my strength. You are my strength. Yes, you are, God. Strength like, strength like no, no other, other strength. There's no other strength like yours. Strength like no other. And it reaches. It reaches to me. Come on, sing it again. Sing it. You are my strength. Come on, if you know it, you ought to be lifting it up. Come on. Strength like no other. Matter of fact, I wish you would begin to lift your hands and reach for the strength that's reaching to you. Come on. And it reaches. Let's go. In the fullness of your grace. Come on. Hey. In the fullness of your grace. In the power. In the power. Come on. You lift me up. In the fullness. In the fullness of your grace. In the power. In the power of your you name. You lift me up. You lift me up. Yes, Lord. Come on. Can somebody tell God thank you, thank you for Jesus. lifting you up? Lift me up. Hey. Oh, my. 
want to do we say do what you want to do hallelujah you are a strong tower you are a way maker hallelujah God you can do anything all we have to do is believe and we declare we declare our belief today we let go of doubt and we believe that you are God 
that you are God and there is none like you, that you are God and you're still working miracles. We believe. I thank you for the hope that somebody's going to walk out with today. Hallelujah. Huh? That we're going to be made better in your presence today. Glory. Can you clap your hands for Jesus? Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you why I know that you're in the right place this morning? When I came up on the church grounds this morning, I felt a strong burden to pray. And so I began to pray to the Lord. And the Spirit of the Lord said to me that somebody was going to come in this morning feeling defeated. Now, I don't know who you are because he didn't show me your face. But the Lord told me to tell you he's already given you the victory today. Yeah. Huh? He said somebody was going to walk in feeling defeated. But you're going to walk out feeling victorious. Huh? I said you're going to walk out feeling victorious. Huh? The Lord said he's already stepped in. Whee! The Lord said he's already made a way. Before the weapon even gets to you, he's already blocked it. I said before the weapon even gets to you, the Lord told me to tell you he's already blocked it. He's already stepped. Lord, have mercy. I saw God stepping in. I said I saw God stepping in. I said I saw God stepping in. Well, what was he stepping into? He was stepping in the way. He was stepping in the way so that you wouldn't get hit, so that you wouldn't get attacked. He stepped in the way. You ought to tell your neighbor, God stepped in the way today. Uh, God stepped in the way today. Huh? God stepped in the way today. Woo! He's not late. He stepped in the way. He's not late. He stepped in the way. Hallelujah. You will not walk out of here feeling defeated. You will walk out of here feeling victorious. Do I have any victorious people in this place? Come on, I need you to clap for the Lord. Come on, I need you to clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's already given you the victory. Victory. Oh. I don't know who it was for, but it was, if it was for you, you ought to praise him for it. You ought to lift your hands for it. Hallelujah. Because God has already done it. Hey, matter of fact, I saw the weapon form. I saw the enemy launch it, but I saw God step. My brother, can I tell you something? God has stepped in the way of what the enemy wanted to do to you. God has stepped in the way, huh? And he told Satan that it will not happen. He has stepped in on your behalf today. You're in the right place at the right time. Because love, faith, and power will praise God on your behalf. Hallelujah. 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 I'm telling you, God has moved in the way. God has stepped in the way. Oh, God. Hey, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The enemy won't make it to your house. The weapon won't make it to your address. The weapon won't make it to your job. The weapon won't make it to your children because God has... It won't make it to your mind. It won't make it to your heart because God has. Somebody ought to shout, stepped in the way. Somebody ought to shout, stepped in the way. Somebody ought to shout, God stepped in the way. He stepped in the way. I don't have to fight the battle because God already. battle ain't yours. This battle ain't yours. This battle ain't yours because God has already stepped in the way for you. Hallelujah. I just had to encourage you because it was laid on me so hard this morning. Glory be to God. And I literally saw God, a big God, 
Huh? He's mighty. I said he's mighty. So he stepped in in a mighty way. God don't do nothing little. He does everything in a mighty, powerful way. And you're going to be amazed. Do you hear me? You're going to, I don't know why I keep looking at you. You're going to be amazed at what God does on your behalf because he's doing it in a mighty way. Now somebody really lift your voice and praise him. Come on, lift your voice and praise him. Come on, I'm going to just confess that that was for me. I'm going to just confess that that was for me. Because God knows that my mind has been everywhere. But to hear that God has stepped in the way. (laughs) It'll hit in a minute. To know that whatever you're facing, that God has stepped in the way. Whatever you've been battling with mentally, God has stepped in the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my job is simple. (laughs) I'm here to welcome you, each and every person that is in this building, to love, faith, and power Christian ministries. Clap your hands for yourselves. Everybody that is worshiping with 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 us online, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Um, everybody that has a cell phone, everybody got a cell phone in here? Raise your hand if you got a cell phone. Everybody, I want y'all to do this for me. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, even our YouTube at LFPCMNC. Um, LFPCMNC.org is our website. Clap it up for our website, y'all. Clap it up for our website. Now, on this next part, I need everybody to do me a favor. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We want to give a big, warm, and acknowledge our leaders, Bishop Richard Carnegie and Pastor Barbara Carnegie. We love you. You guys do so much for us. We thank you. And, of course, um, just a few announcements. Today is Dress Down Center. Y'all fresh today. Y'all fresh? Okay. I, look, I tried to come in with a little some, just, just a little. Um, so do me a favor, just take a picture, um, selfie, get your, get your cousins, your family to take a picture with you, y'all hashtag LFPCM, okay, can y'all do that for me, all right, all right, um, a few more announcements, Bishop would like to meet with all members following service today, all right, so all members hang out for a little bit, um, Bishop is going to want to meet with us, um, also today we will send the pounding box home. We know that we've been talking about pounding our leaders, right? So look, today is the last day for that. Um, We're going to be sending the pounding box home with our leaders. Um, Anyone that would like to give a financial gift um, can do that today. Um, Just get with our finance team that's in the back. Um, Somebody else will be back there. And at this time, um, what I'm going to do is have Bishop come up, and we're going to take up our tithes and offering. Amen. All right. Good morning to you. Good morning to everybody else. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Amen. We certainly do honor the Lord on today, and we're so honored to be here on the Bible declares that this is the day that the Lord had made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We honor God today. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you. We give honor, praise God, to our pastor, 
Pastor Barbara, amen, on this morning, and amen, we honor God for his presence, amen, that reigns in this place. I feel the presence of the Lord in this place on today, amen. We thank God for each and every one of um, you, those who have joined us by way of Facebook. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. I'm getting ready to receive tithes right now. If you are a tither today, then we want you to come right now and stand and get ready. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to bless our tithes and our offering. Our deacons are coming just a moment and receive our morning offering. Amen. But what a privilege it is to bring tithes and offering into the house of the Lord. What a great promise God has made to all of us who will be obedient in the area of giving. Praise God. He said, try me now in this and see that I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessings that you shall not have room enough woo, to receive. That's God's word for God's people. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you today, and we give you glory and honor and praise. And as we come to give, God, we give, we give it cheerfully, and we give it as unto the Lord. We pray, God, that, that the promise that you made to us will be fulfilled and brought forth in our lives. We receive it today. As we release our tithe, as we give our offering, we know that you're going to give back to us. Press down, shaken together, and running over, shall you call blessings to come back into our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and bring your tithe. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Our deacons are coming to receive our morning offering. As you prepare to give on this morning, give your offering, I would ask everybody to stand that is prepared to give. We're going to start from the back. So I usher, I back, I usher the elder that's raising her hand. From the back side, we're going to go to your right. We just ask that everybody participate with us as a family. We're all giving a total of $25. We got gold, y'all. We got gold, so we definitely want to beat those. Yeah.
and we're tired of you. All right. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for being a giver. All right. Family and friends are, are coming to bring baby Sky to be dedicated back to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Parents, grandparents, guardians, siblings, friends, they're all coming. Amen. All right. That's it. Take a whole village to raise a child. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. My, my brothers and sisters, this is a significant occasion that brings us together. The Bible bears witness that since the days of old, godly parents brought their children to the temple to be dedicated back to God. Hannah brought her son Samuel and even Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, brought him back to the temple. When we bring our children to the house of God to be dedicated back to God, we're saying to God, one, we're, we're telling God, thank you for the gift, the gift of life that only God can give. So we're telling him that we thank him for giving us a precious life to care for in this world. And then we're saying to God, we need your help, that we're not wise enough. We're not smart enough to raise this child on our own. We're saying to God, God, we need your help. We're, we're weak, but you're strong. And I still believe, even though times have changed, I still believe that it is the right thing to do, to give our children back to God and ask God's blessing over their life. So I commend you today for bringing your child, the child that God has given you, back to the church and saying to God, help us raise this child in the way, God, that you would have it go. Every one of you and every one of us will have a responsibility to help raise this child to be good examples for this child, to help guide this child in a way that when this child becomes of age, it can make its own decision about following Christ. So let us take that responsibility serious. It, it, it's still right to correct children. When we see them going wrong, when we see them doing wrong, it's our responsibility to correct them and help show them the right way. Pastor Barbara is coming now. In accordance with the purpose for which you have come, will you please now respond to the following covenant? Do you dedicate yourselves as parents to bring up your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. If so, respond by saying, we do. Do you promise to instruct her in the Bible and in the practice of prayer to guide her in the development of a Christ-like character and to diligently bring her to the services of the church where she will be taught the way of life? If so, respond, we do. Do you promise to try to the best of your ability 
to to so to shape the home life of your child by family devotions by your words and your example that she will at the proper age most naturally come to an open confession of Christ thus appropriating by a living faith that spiritual life that obtains in and through Jesus Christ thereby coming into the fellowship and service of the church if so respond by saying we do amen all right, Pastor, I'm going to let you take baby Sky. Amen. She seems like she's kind of getting stirred up over there. I know. Amen. All right. Now, we dedicate you to the Lord today. Now, as you can see, baby, you got a lot of people watching over you. So you can't go astray got too many people loving you and caring for you, praying for you, so you, you won't be able to act up. <laughs> Amen. We dedicate you today. All right, get some, get some water. Now go you. Get the water. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the precious Holy Spirit, we dedicate you today back to God. We give you back to him all the days of your life. May he watch over you and care for you. We're praying, Father, in Jesus' name, we pray your blessings over this precious child. In the name of Jesus, Bless her. As she grow, God, through the years, we pray that your grace will be abundantly applied to her life. Each and every day, keep her safe. Oh, God, keep her in your arms, in your loving, tender care. We thank you. We pray you'll bless her parents, her grandparents, her siblings, her, her, her extended family, God, that they'll be good caretakers of what you've given to us. And we thank you. And God, we give you praise, not only today, but for, for the rest of her life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. The peace and the grace of God be over you and over this family today, tomorrow, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a precious little one you had. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's nothing like having a beautiful christening and watching a parent dedicate their children back Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Somebody ought to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the first step in raising your children right is giving them back to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm uh, praise and worship ministry is coming back, after which you're going to hear the word of the Lord this morning from two of our associate ministers, Evangelist Battle and Minister Hunter. Give them your attention and get ready to receive the word. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, we are in the days of Elijah. Glory. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. We in the days of Elijah. There is no God like my God. 
I'm going to say it again. There is no God like my God. I can search east, west, north, south, but guess what? There's nobody like him. Nobody like him. Yes. Come on, if everybody can stand right. to your feet, let's worship just for a moment. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come on, you can clap. Come on, everybody say it like this. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Come on, clap your hands. 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 Come on, clap your hands.
Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. If God's been good to you, yes, sir. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. If God's been good to you, oh, yes, sir. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Can make a way out of nowhere? Yes, sir. Can he open doors for you? Yes, sir. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Everybody say it like this. There's no God like you. There's no God like you. Oh, my God. There's no God like you. Oh, my God. There's no God. God bless you. Honor and to the leader, all the leaders in the house, and to you, you and you. I'm going to get right into my message. My title is God is our peace. Amen. Peace is a gift from God. Amen. It is God's will and desire for us to experience his peace, which passes all understanding. God is our peace, even in the very midst of our troubles. Anybody have any troubles? I think we all have troubles. Amen. And it's good to know God is there with us in the midst of all of them. Amen. I'm going to go to Philippians 4 and 6 through verse 9. And it reads, I'm in the NIV. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, Whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. 
Now, verse 6 is telling us to be anxious for nothing and pray. Amen? Verse 7 tells us that the peace of God, which surpasses or exceeds, if you will, all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8 and 9, basically shortened, tells us, Whatsoever things are true and honest, a regard to truth in our words and engagements and to decency and becomingness in our behavior, suitable to our circumstances and conditions of life. If there be any, if there be any virtue among you, amen. Now, peace is something we all need. Not just peace, the peace of God. Amen. Whether you are educated or not, rich or poor, young or old, a believer or not, we all have moments of stress and anxiety. If you are poor, you're concerned about having nothing to eat or a place to live. If you are rich, you're worried about being robbed or your home possibly being burglarized. (laughs) Healthy people may worry about getting sick. The sick worries about dying too early or young. Amen. The Word of God tells us these three things. One, from the words of Jesus in Philippians 4, peace comes from God. Two times when peace is mentioned, verse 7 and 9, both make reference to God who gives it. Peace, number two, peace is God's will for us. God does not want us to live in fear or worry. Do not be anxious about anything. Jesus said in Matthew 6 and 25, Do not worry about what we eat or drink or wear. Look at the birds of the air. Your heavenly Father feeds them. Amen? And number three, God gives us peace in the midst of troubles. Can there be peace in a calm, safe, and stable environment where every need is met? Of course. God wants and desires all of us as his children to live in perfect peace. Amen. He wants us to not worry, and that comes when we fully submit to him. Scripture tells us to worry over nothing and pray over everything. Amen. We can't worry and pray too. Because worry proves you're not submitting whatever issue you prayed for. You've got to pray and believe God to move on your behalf and trust fully in him. Amen. Our God is a mighty God and a powerful God. He is the one who controls everything He created. He is the one who can and will take care of every problem we will ever have. He holds all power in his hands. Amen. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives in John 14 and 27. The peace of God will take away all fear, worry, and stress we may encounter. True peace does not come about by merely thinking positively or being a positive thinker. True peace is not just a good feeling. True peace does not come from believing we are in control. But true peace comes from knowing that God the Father is still on the throne and that he is still in control. Amen. 
true peace is knowing that this earthly life is merely a journey or a trip. True peace is knowing that this life is not the end, but just a stepping stone to a greater and higher place in his kingdom. Because of the Holy Spirit, we are able to live by faith and not worry no matter what happens. Amen? Because the Spirit empowers you to be faithful, to trust, and to yield to God's will. With the Holy Spirit, you are able to trust God beyond your ability to know what will happen in your life. God wants us to obtain peace through prayer. That requires having a personal relationship through prayer and fully trusting in him. Amen. All things, everything in our lives are of concern to God. The big things, the small things, even down to the very way that we live and the things that we do. The peace that God gives us will guard our minds if we just trust in him. Amen. The peace that God gives us will even strengthen us. The peace that God gives us will even strengthen us. In the presence of God, there is peace. We need to invite the presence of God, and that is done by prayer. In prayer, you are transformed. Prayer is essentially our tool or access to the only true one that holds the keys to our future and has all the answers to our issues in life. I advise everyone to have a prayer life. And hope that all of us do. Amen. Amen. Prayer is simply communication with God. God wants us to obtain and have true peace in our lives by meditating on what is holy and of him. It reads in the NIV of Romans 8 and 6, The mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Amen. God wants us to fill our heart with what is good and of him and trust him in everything. Let us go to Psalm 119 and 78. Elder, do you need that for me? Uh-huh, and 78. Psalms 119, verse 78. May the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause, but I will meditate on your precepts. Okay. The latter part of that verse reads, but I will meditate in thy precepts. And I looked it up in, the, in a commentary, and it breaks down. Shame the proud who harm me with lies. While I ponder your precepts, God allows sin to work itself out, and the psalmist is merely pray, praying for God to do as he said he would. The precepts of God, the word of God is truth, purity, and excellence. We need to meditate on the word of God as believers so that we might be transformed by the renewing of our mind. God wants us to have true peace by putting into practice what we have learned. This is the example of what we may say sometimes as preachers practice what we preach. Amen. God wants us to trust him for everything. Just as it reads in Philippians 4 and 6, don't be anxious for anything. The second part of Philippians 4 and 6 reads in the NIV, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Meditate on what is holy. Amen. These things are written to us so that the God of peace may be with you. 
not simply peace, but the God of peace will be with you. Ultimately, this is about God dwelling within you. John 16 and 33 reads in the NIV, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. May the peace of God be with you all. Amen. Amen. Oh, don't stop praising God. God deserves all our praises. Amen. He woke us up and he got us started on our way this morning. Amen. It could have been the other way. Somebody didn't wake up on this morning, but we did. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. I want to give honor to Lord, for my being here, give honor to my bishop and pastor, give honor to my husband, Deacon Hunter, all the other deacons and ministers in the building, give honor to all of you for being here, because you could have been anywhere else. If you will all go with me to 1 Kings chapter 17, I'll be starting at the 8th verse, and it reads, The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zeherpheth, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zeherpheth, and when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as, he, as, as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Then, he, then she said, as the, Lord our, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from the first and bring it to me, and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up. Nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. If I may use for a topic, let it go, and I will bless you. You know, we, we as people in the flesh, we hold on to so much stuff. We say we want God to deliver us from this or that. But yet, we hold on to what we want God to deliver us from. God is trying to tell us to let it go, and he will bless us. You know, as we read in this, these verses of scripture, that the widow woman knew she only had very little flour and oil, barely enough for herself and her son. She also knew that, she also knew that when it was gone, there would be nothing left. When Elijah told her to make a small cake for him, then make some for her and her son, 
she was skeptical. She was looking at what she had, which was a very little. <clears throat> Barely enough for her and her son. So she didn't want to make a cake for Elijah. She wanted to feed herself and her son and die. Elijah told her that if she did as he told her, which he was telling her what the Lord said, that her bin of flour would never run out and her oil would never dry up. What Elijah was trying to tell her was, if she obeyed the word of the Lord, he would bless her. He would take her little and make it much. He would multiply the little bit that she had and give her more than enough. He was trying to tell her to let it go and God would bless her. This is what God does for us all the time. He tells us in so many ways to let it go, and I will bless you. You know, it's like when we do a seed offering. Um, sometimes here at our church, we have seed offerings. And, you know, everybody's funny with their money. You don't want to let go of your money. But if we do a seed offering for $50, you look in your wallet and you see, mm, all I got is $50. If I do this seed, I'm going to be broke. Well, that $50, it don't meet your needs, so it's a seed. If that $50 ain't enough to pay that bill, but it's enough to sow that seed, you better sow that seed. Because the God I serve, he'll take a little and make it much. He will give you double for your trouble. If you sow that $50 seed, you might get $500 before you get home. If you sow that $50 seed, you might get $5,000 before you get home. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let it go, and I will bless you. We all have struggles. We struggle over different things. You know, my struggle ain't like your struggle. But we all struggle. We pray to God, Lord Jesus, help me get through this. Lord Jesus, help me get through that. And all the time the Lord is trying to tell us, let it go and I will bless you. But we don't want to let it go. We give God just a little bit. We give God just a teeny bit of room to work on our behalf. But we need to give God all of it. We need to let it all go. Don't hold on to nothing. God says if we have sickness, don't hold on to it. Let it go. I will bless you. If we have addictions, don't hold on to it. Let it go. I will bless you. If we have ill will towards our sisters and brothers, don't hold on to it. Let it go. I will bless you. If we have depression, don't hold on to it. Let it go. I will bless you. If we are backbiters, Lord Jesus, if we're backbiters, don't hold on to it. Let it go. I will bless you. If we got loose tongues, we talk about people left and right. Yeah, I'm going to go there. We talk about people left and right. God said, let it go. I will bless you. You know, sometimes that's why we don't get blessed. Because we hold on to too much stuff. We don't really want to quit talking about people. We know it's wrong. But the only way we're going to get blessed is if we stop it. We don't want to stop it. It's too much fun, I know. We, we like it. We enjoy it a little bit. If you got that envious spirit, let it go. I will bless you. God says if you got that backbiting spirit, let it go. I will bless you. I, you know, I know we're all dealing with a lot. We're dealing with so much. But the truth of the matter is, we don't want to let it go. And I just want to tell you, if we let it go, God will bless us. Whatever you're looking for God to bless you for today, let all that mess 
yes go. He will bless you. So we just going to bring everything to God. We going to bring that depression, that depression spirit to the altar and let it go. Bring that lying tongue to the altar and let it go. Bring that envious spirit to the altar and let it go. Bring that womanizing man to the altar and let it go. Bring that midnight rambling spirit to the altar and let it go. Bring that loose woman to the altar and let it go. Bring it all to the altar and let it go. Hallelujah, Jesus. Whatever it is, just get it all in your mind right now. Whatever it is you want God to deliver you from, bring it to the altar and let it go. If you don't take nothing away from what I said today, just listen to this. The Lord said, bring it to the altar and let it go. And I will bless you. Don't stop clapping. Keep clapping your hands. Amen. Keep rejoicing over that word that went forth. Hallelujah. Thank God for the preacher. Thank God for the word of God. Hallelujah. I, how though, I don't know if they talked and coordinated those messages, but they went hand in hand, didn't they? Because the only way you can have peace is you have to let some stuff go. Nah. The only way you will get the peace of God to come into your mind and heart, you have to let some of that other stuff go that's been bringing confusion and anxiety in your life. God wants us to let stuff go. The old saying, let it be water under the bridge and just move on. Hallelujah. 